Okay, PBC Calculus students, um, in this video, I'm going to explain what is a sequence and how do you find the limit of the sequence. Uh, this is the page number five in the packet, chapter 8.1, sequence. Homework for tonight is page number 564. Check the assignment. I'm going to post this homework in the assignment PDF copy. Um, this time in the, my packet, there is a no textbook page available. So please check the assignment for this homework. Uh, make sure you clearly label the problem number and uh, show all the work. Um, before this, I wanted to make sure that you have watched my previous video, which is about the introduction of uh, sequence series and the importance of series in this calculus. Okay, so this is a brief review again. Sequence is a list of things generated by a rule. More formally, sequence is a function whose domain is positive integers. So the good thing is n is always integer. We are going to look at these numbers and the counter. n is a counter. Counter is always going to be integer. The range of the functions are called terms of the sequence. So for example, a1, a2, a, I mean a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, there won't be 1 and a half. There won't be 2 and a half. There cannot be half term. You always have a full term, which is nth term is a rule of the sequence. And we denote by this uh, special bracket that is a, we write it, a n, a n is a rule. So sequence can be expressed by so many different ways. You can write ample number of terms separated by a comma. We always prefer there has to be at least three to four. Then only you can find what's the rule. So ample number means at least three to four. Explicit function defined by the rule of the sequence, which is you can say a n is the rule of the sequence. And this is the rule of the sequence set off in a braces. Like I'm going to explain this much easier by looking at this. You don't have to understand that what is the explicit function. That's the rule, basically. What's the rule? So take a look at here 3, 8, 13, 15. Each time you are adding 5. So you can say that this is my linear and this is the rule. This is a a n. So that's the rule of 5x mx plus b and 5n minus 2 is arithmetic sequence. Common difference is a 5. You can make connection that looks like a linear function. In pre-calculus, we learned that the nth term of the arithmetic sequence is nth term of the arithmetic sequence, which I explained in the previous uh, video, a n is the first one plus difference times n minus 1. This is a mx plus b. nth term is first one plus common difference n minus 1. Okay, so this is a geometric sequence. You can see that each time you multiply by negative 3. Each time you multiply by negative 3. So then this is your rule, a n, which you can clearly see that it looks like a b to the x. is a geometric sequence because the common ratio is negative 3. Now there will be some multiple choice question where you have to identify the common ratio. So know that multiply by negative 0.3 is 15 again negative becomes positive and onwards so nth term of the geometric sequence is a n is first term here you can clearly see r to the n minus 1 that's the pretty much generic rule is first one r is the common ratio in pre-calculus we had a base p here we use the r which is a common ratio to the n minus 1 now, some sequences are not arithmetic, not geometric. Because we have seen that in a pre-calculus or in algebra 2, that not all the time you get to see linear and exponential functions. Sometimes you have worked with a rational function like this. Sometimes you have a quadratic or some combination of exponential. These are not purely arithmetic or geometric, but these are other series. 
So how do we come up with the rule for that? Well, sometimes it's already given to you. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. List first five terms of this given sequence. So you always, always, always starts with one. And you start with one. You can double check here. The counter starts with one here. N is starting with one because it's a natural number. Counter is your natural number. You are counting from one. You don't count from zero. You count from one. So here you substitute one, negative one to the one is negative. So my first term is a two, comma. Two, n is a two, then becomes positive. So it's a four. And then two and four and two. These are my five terms. You can see if you have to write more, then you can see that it's nothing but oscillating between four and two, four and two, four and two. So let's take a look at this one here. If you start n is a one, so one over one minus two, that's my first term. Two over one minus four, this is comma. Three over one minus six, comma. Four over one minus eight, 5 over 1 minus 10. These are my first five terms. But yeah, of course, if you simplify, it would look like this. Now, imagine there is no pattern here. It will be so complicated if we have to find the rule. If we have to find the rule. So next question comes, where this is going to go? What's the end behavior? If you recall in a pre-calculus, we learned the end behavior of this function. So clearly this is oscillating between two. So there is no end behavior. It's not my limit and approach is infinity does not exist. But what about here? Can I see something here? What will be my last term? If n approaches infinity, if we started back in a pre in this unit, the limit statement. If I put the limit n approaches infinity, you can clearly see that it will levels off somewhere in negative half. And I did not give you this in your notes, but you can clearly see that this limit ends up to one half. That number will be half. So starting with this is negative one, then negative two third, negative three fifth. So when n approaches infinity, numerator and denominator will have only difference of negative half. And then that's what comes to the limit of the sequence. So let's take a look at this part here. This is the something you must know. So limit of the sequence. And a n is the sequence of a real number. We are only doing this in terms of this. Integers, we have already done this in function mode. The only difference here is they are all discrete. That means integers they are all the numbers so n approaches infinity if the limit does not exist we can say that the sequence diverge if goes to negative infinity we say the sequence diverge to negative infinity if there is a answer c for example answer is a c in this case we have answer is one half we have the answer is a one half so let me show you here we can see that so this sequence converged to negative one half. That's what the C is. So in this picture, you can say this is the C and that's what it converges to a number. Sometimes sequence oscillates between two fixed number, which example was here, two, four, two, four, that oscillates between the two numbers. And we call this oscillation, diverges by oscillation. So let's put this concept in a practice. On page number six, we have several sequences given to us and we have to identify if diverge or converge. Okay, so you must show the limit statement. N approaches infinity A of N. You must show this limit statement. Homework is very similar to this. So let me show you the first one. Limit n approaches infinity. This is the rule. n over n plus 1. So 
where did we start with? Remember in August month, we started with the limit statement and the function mode, the only difference here is instead of X, we have N. And we can see that degree of numerator, denominator is the same. So this answer is a one. And we can say that this sequence converges to one. converges to one. So we, this is the same example from the previous one. On the previous page we did, but we still have to write it fancy way. This answer to this limit statement n over negative 2n. So this converges to negative 1 half. And we can say this sequence converges to negative 1 half. I showed you the picture of this on the other side. If I plot those points, it will be bounded by negative one half. So limit n approaches infinity, one over two to the n. Now let's make connection here, one over two to the n, this is exponential decay function. Sometimes you will have to use the L'Hopital too. So here we can say one over infinity is a zero and this sequence converges to zero. Let's make a connection to exponential function. You can also rewrite this 2 to the negative n, which is the decay function. That's why limit is 0. This is the same example which I showed you on the other side, other page. Limit n approaches infinity 3 plus negative 1 to the n. Anytime you are not sure what's happening, you always substitute the n value and you can see that this is 2, 4, 2, 4, n onwards. So this one diverges by oscillation. So what's happening here? Sometimes you cannot identify clearly what's happening. What will be this limit? And that's where you have to use a L'Hopital. This will give you infinity over infinity. You do not write equal to sign. We are just checking infinity over infinity, which is undefined. You have to find the derivative of 1 over n. I mean, derivative of ln n, I said the answer is 1 over n. And derivative of n is a 1, which will become 1 over n. And the answer will be 0. And approaches infinity. By definition, this becomes derivative. Now, this is the L'Hopital informally we are using. So, you don't have to really show the work. This is the special case. I would show you the trick how to evaluate this. Think about this as a limit to infinity. Which function is going to reach infinity first? ln n is one of the slowest function. This is the polynomial. Denominator will reach infinity first. So you can say 1 over infinity answer is 0. So you can apply that knowledge here or you can go formally by using L'Hopital. So let's take a look at one other one with the factorial. N factorial, N plus 2 factorial. In the previous video, I explained that N plus 2 factorial, you have to rewrite as N factorial. Then comes after that is N plus 1 and N plus 2. So factorials, these two get cancelled. And left is denominator only. And you can say this becomes bottom heavy. N is 1 over infinity. Answer is 0 converges to 0. This was converges to 0. Yes, you have to say that what value it converges. Okay, so you may pause the video again and try some of these problems on your own and then you can play again and you can check the answers. 2n factorial and n minus 1. Here 2 is not in the parenthesis, so you can factor out 2 outside. If it is inside, it is usually inside the parenthesis. n minus 1. 
and then after n minus 1 comes n and this will be n minus 1 factorial I did not write correctly let me fix that it is n minus 1 factorial times n and these two get cancelled this becomes limit n approaches infinity two times n which is infinity and diverges so some student says why we are showing all this work can't we say that the numerator is heavier because 2n factorial is a bigger than n minus 1 factorial yes sometimes these questions are going to be multiple choice questions and you can easily eliminate certain answer choices that yeah this is going to converge this is going to diverge and typically a bunch of sequences are going to you given to you and you have to identify which one converge which one diverge so let's take a look at these two next two do not eliminate them as an alternator we call that this negative one to the n is an alternator if you are not sure what this sequence looks like go ahead substitute the values and expand and you can see what's happening i'm going to show you another approach here is rewrite n over n and one over n because this is a re n over n and you can split this because of the plus sign we have now if i apply the limit statement remember limit statement you can distribute so this n over n becomes one now here negative 1 to the n over infinity this is something over infinity something over infinity negative 1 to the n is just the alternator it gives you plus minus plus minus plus minus but something over infinity is always 0 and this limit converges to 1 converges to 1 so let's take a look at this very similar concept here limit n approaches infinity negative 1 to the n n minus 1 over n n minus 1 over n now here remember they are multiplied together you can't really do anything these are multiplication they are both different so think about what happened to this piece n approaches infinity this piece becomes one and the left is only this n approaches infinity negative one to the n and this is nothing but one plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one and onwards so diverges by oscillation the both are quite different because we have a plus sign here and these are multiplied together okay so the last bottom row here this is very interesting challenging questions here these are going to be very interesting challenging question I'm going to take this out here n to the n is a called tower function Another name is a tetrahon, some other num function. This is a phone unit, but not in AP. I don't want to confuse for this something which is not in the AP exam, but I, I always teach this. This is so fun part that, which is the king of the functions, which is the highest ever functions. This is a like kind of a climax of the calculus unit. So you have learned all those, which one is faster, which one is slower. So let's talk about here, two to the n and n factorial. How do we find the derivative of factorial? If I put this, this is very interesting question. Guys, pay attention. We have to know who is faster, two over n and n plus one factorial. This is infinity. That's also infinity, infinity over infinity. How do we apply L'Hopital's rule? We know the derivative of 2 to the n is 2 to the n times ln 2. But how do we find the derivative of factorial? 
how many there are n n plus one and minus one oh, like infinite many chain rule impossible we can we are not expected to do that so here we go you could do it is take a look at the calculator put this in y1 and y2 put this 2 to the n and n plus 1 factorial in the calculator and go ahead check it out who is reaching infinity first which one is the faster which one is the faster function i'm not going to take out the calculator here i let you guys do it this answer is a zero because n plus 1 factorial is faster than exponential basically exponent factorials are faster than 2 to the n so this is we are doing using calculator checking the answer because calculus is not really helpful here to find the derivative of n plus 1 factorial now the most important one is this limit n approaches infinity 1 plus 1 over n to the n. I did not teach the L'Hopital for this part. What happened is this is 1 over infinity. If I do the direct substitution, if I do the direct substitution, you can see 1 over infinity is a 0 and I get 1 to the infinity. 1 to the infinity is not 1. This is an indeterminate form. This is the seventh part of the seventh form of the indeterminate form. 1 to the infinity is not 1. In fact, this is the definition of E. This is the definition of E. Recognize, must recognize this must recognize this pattern you have to because we don't have to do a lot of work this is the continuous compound interest formula if you recall this this is a compound interest formula 1 plus 1 over n to the n is a e if you want you can check put in the calculator and see this number converges to e so know the pattern 1 plus 1 over n to the n is a e converges to e okay so last piece in this uh, video is monotonic simple simple concept here is monotonic sequence and bounded sequence sometimes you cannot determine the limit of a particular sequence but it is useful to know whether the sequence converge so let's talk about monotonic word what is monotonic means purely increasing or purely decreasing a monotonic sequence means non-decreasing non-increasing so remember we saw that 3 plus negative 1 to the n this is oscillating so this is called non-monotonic you can see these numbers are purely going up 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 numbers are this is purely going down so non-monotonic you can see here n square and 2 to the n they have nothing to do with each other you cannot predict whether the function will be going up or down so you cannot find the limit versus here 2n over 1 plus n we can clearly see this is bounded by 2. That's what the bounded sequence. That means, in other words, horizontal asymptote. In other words, horizontal asymptote. Purely going up, 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 but labels off at 2. This sequence will label off at 2. So, purely increasing, purely decreasing, like 2 to the n is monotonic. Increasing, we can say increasing, which is non-decreasing because it's always going to go up, 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 up. If 2 to the negative n, we know that it is purely decreasing. It's going to come down, but bounded where? It bounded at 0. So this is bounded means, in other words, bounded means what's the limit? And behavior, where is the horizontal asymptote? So I hope this has helped you. 
the one last thing i want to explain here is know the order of dominance dominance oh by the way let me explain the homework homework is this page check the numbers i'm going to post this homework in a assignment but the last piece this is very important to know how do you know the dominating so i always call know the race to infinity know the order order of functions we have learned so far so many functions many times if you know the dominance who is dominating who so i would like you to write down this on a paper is know that ln x is the slowest function this is the slowest function slowest function then comes polynomial then comes polynomial polynomial also you know that this is the power is x the lower the power right x to the n the, the, the polynomial okay so we know who is the slowest then the polynomial then comes exponential exponential functions also we know that smaller the power is 2 to the x is smaller than e to the x right is smaller than 10 to the x so know this exponential is but then who is going to be the king of all the function king of all the function is the factorial factorial is always the faster so we call them dominance know the dominance who is going to dominate who when you have all this bunch of now these are in the function mode we will see them in a series mode that means n n n square 2 to the n e to the n 10 to the n n factorial so the dominance is really really helpful to spot which is converging which one is diverging uh, make sure you submit the homework and i will see you in class thank you so much